It's sweet potato harvest time. This seemed like the perfect time for me to look back and see exactly how we got such a great sweet potato harvest. So let's go from start to finish on how to grow sweet potatoes. And for those sweet potato purists, let's call it from slips to tubers. Years ago when I was a beginner gardener, sweet potatoes were the first thing that I grew where I ended up with a complete year's supply. Up until then I had only grown enough vegetables and fruits for small snacks or just for fresh eating. But sweet potatoes opened my mind to the idea of being able to grow enough of something to supply all of our needs. It helps that sweet potatoes are incredibly easy to grow, so even as a beginner, it was hard for me to mess up. Now let's get right into it. I'm Petrina, and this is my channel, Homegrown Florida. If you could please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, it really helps me out a bunch. I really hope that these end-to-end -end videos like this one are beneficial to you, so make sure to head down to the comments and leave me a note. The first step to growing sweet potatoes are growing slips. You may think you can grow sweet potatoes like regular potatoes, but they are actually from two different plant families. So while they may have a similar name and look, they are actually very different. White potatoes are grown as clones, so you bury a piece or a whole potato to produce more of it. But sweet potatoes don't work that way. It actually is possible to bury a sweet potato and grow more, but you will run into several problems leading to very small potato harvests. This is because you should actually be growing the slips from a sweet potato and not the actual potato. But slips come from the actual sweet potato. I know it sounds kind of confusing. The easiest way to start slips from my experience is to head to the grocery store and find an organic sweet potato. You can also purchase slips online um, or from a nursery if you want to skip this step in entirely. So once you have an organic sweet potato, you want to bury it on its side in the dirt, but only about halfway up the potato. You want some of the potato to be seen above the soil. Water it a couple times a week and very soon you will start to see sprouts from the potato. These sprouts will start to grow into plants with these heart-shaped leaves. These are what we call slips. Once the slips are about six inches long, you want to actually break them off the sweet potato as close to the potato as possible. A typical organic sweet potato should be able to give you somewhere between 10 and 25 slips before it eventually rots away. The reason why organic is important is that non-organic are sprayed with things to keep them from sprouting so they're more appealing in the store. But you want yours to sprout, so you don't want anything sprayed with sprout inhibitors. So once you've broken the slip from the potato, I like to leave them in a cup of water in indirect sunlight for a few days. In that time, you will start to see them grow these little white roots. Once they have a few roots, that's when it's time to plant them outside. Be careful not to leave them in the water cup too long because these can cause them to rot and die. Once you have those roots, let's get to planting. I like to prep my bed at this time. I make sure I'm starting with a bed that has nice fluffy soil so that the potatoes have room to grow and expand. A great option for this if you don't want to till is to use one of the hand tillers that you just poke into the ground and just very gently move the soil. I prefer this method rather than a mechanical tiller because it's minimal disruption to the soil life while still providing that aeration to the soil. You also want to be starting with healthy soil that maintains moisture. A good way to do this is to lay down a layer of compost and then a thick, thick layer of mulch. 
From here, planning slips are very simple. Poke a hole about three inches down and slide the slip down into the hole. You want it deep enough that the roots are protected from the hot surface, but not so deep that you'll be killing yourself with digging them when it's time to harvest. And in case I didn't mention it, you want to plant the slips once the weather gets above 60 degrees at night. For me here in Central Florida, I usually aim to start my slips from that potato at the beginning of March so that the slips are ready to be planted by mid-April. You can do this much earlier if you like, um, but I have found that sweet potato plants adore crazy heat, and they are the stars of the garden during our hot and humid summers. When nothing else grows, sweet potatoes grow. <laughs> While the slips are adjusting to their new home, they will require to be watered every day or two if it doesn't rain. But don't stress out too much. They take no time at all to get adjusted. Maybe a week or two, you will start to see it putting on new growth and new leaves. At that point, you can cut back on the watering to weekly. And then normally by this time, our regular daily rains have started here in Florida and I end up never watering them again. <laughs> Two other things I never do once they are established is fertilize or treat for bugs. I basically ignore them for the entire summer. The most I do is dump all my grass clippings from our weekly lawn maintenance on top of the, on top of the plants every week. I like to do this because when harvest time comes, your beds will have sunk down by a lot. And by heaping on mulch like grass clippings adds biomass and feeds the soil. Now let's get back to the bug treatment. I don't do any pest management for sweet potatoes. This does not mean that they are pest proof. The leaves get eaten up like crazy. And I actually found a snake in my little huge jungle of sweet potatoes and a ton of spiders. But none of that seems to affect the yield. So I don't fuss with it. Speaking of that jungle of sweet potatoes um, that's created from all those vines, I have managed the vines in two ways in the past. One year I trimmed all the vines so that they stayed in the bed, but I feel like the potatoes ended up being smaller. Since then, all I do now is I just push the vines back into the bed any way I can. I get pretty aggressive with stuffing them back in and the plant doesn't care at all. The actual hardest part about growing sweet potatoes is waiting and knowing when your potatoes are ready. This is another way that sweet potatoes differ from regular potatoes. Regular potato plants will die out when the potatoes are ready, which also means the potatoes are at their peak size. Sweet potatoes, on the other hand, don't always die off. Unless you live in a cooler climate, your plants will continue to grow and never actually stop. That's because they can be perennials in some warm climates. Another really cool thing about sweet potatoes is that they don't ever reach a peak size and then stop growing. If left to their own devices, they will just keep getting bigger and bigger and eventually they will grow up out of the ground and then start creating their own slips. It's pretty, it's pretty wild and funny. But the best way to know if your sweet potatoes are ready is based on what size you prefer to eat them. And the best way to know that size is to dig down at the base of the plant, find one and see how big it is. You won't hurt the plant doing this. If you come across a potato and you would rather wait for it to get bigger, just cover it back up. Through the years, I've gotten even more lazy than digging. I just wait until I can see them poking out of the ground. And then at that point, I just pull them up one at a time as I need them. I normally don't harvest all of them at once until I actually need the bed for fall gardening in September or October. I know lots of people that even wait until November. So now it's time for harvesting. You could just pull the potatoes as you need them, but there is something really satisfying about harvesting a whole bed of huge sweet potatoes. The easiest way I've found to harvest them is to cut all the vines from the plants and then 
pull it off the bed. Don't throw those vines away. I have a cool trick for you at the end of this video. After all the vines are cut and pulled away, you can start digging with your hands or grab a pitchfork and, and dig deep. You want to avoid piercing the potatoes. So I always start the pitchfork at the edge, the very edge of the bed, straight down, and then come under the plants. And when you lift up, all the sweet potatoes will appear. Then just keep making your way around the bed. You will notice that you're gonna get different size potatoes, different sizes and shapes. Some small, some huge, some round, some long and skinny. They all taste wonderful. I actually love to use the little tiny ones as fingerling style sweet potatoes. They are my favorite. Now that you have all your potatoes harvested, it's time to cure them. And curing is just a really fancy term for allowing the potatoes to thicken their skin and convert the starches to sugar so that they're sweet. The best way to do this is to find a very humid, dark, hot place to lay the potatoes out. My garage is the perfect place for me. Be sure not to wash the dirt off the potato. That dirt will protect the skins of the potato while they are soft until they have time to harden. I leave them in my garage for two weeks and then I brush off the dirt and put them in a paper bag and store them in the house at room temperature. I still don't wash them. I wait until I'm ready to use them to wash the dirt off. They should keep for a year like this. I had sweet potatoes last longer than a year doing it this way. Be sure that you pick a potato or two as the ones you want to use to make slips from next year. The bigger the potato, the more slips you can get off of it. But even the tiny ones will create slips. So really, just save the ones you probably won't eat as your next year slip potatoes. Maybe ones that have damage or bug marks or some that are least appealing. Now let's talk about what to do with all those vines. I strongly discourage you from composting sweet potato vines unless you have a very large composting operation. They take a long time to break down and more likely than not, they will actually just start growing more potatoes instead of breaking down. So what do you do with these? One thing you can do is clip off all the good leaves and blanch them and freeze them as a greens for the year or like a spinach substitute. You can also eat them raw in salads. But the thing I love to do with them is place them back in the bed after I'm done harvesting them and fill the entire bed with wood chips or another heavy mulch. You basically want to bury them under that mulch. And in a couple weeks, you will see new vines emerging and another round of sweet potatoes starting to grow. No need to make slips ever again with this method. But this does mean you will have a bed always in use, so I understand that this isn't always for everyone. Also, if you live in a cold climate, this might not work for you. This year, I harvested 30 pounds of sweet potatoes from just one eight by four foot bed. The average amount of sweet potatoes that Americans consume each year is about six to seven pounds per person. Jason and I probably eat more than that average because I do use them in place of regular potatoes a lot since I can grow these easier than regular potatoes. Last year I grew 20 pounds and we ate all of them. How many were you able to harvest? I'd love to hear about it. Head down in the comments and leave me a note. 